In theatre, surgery has begun on Halgert. Because it's an operation on the brain, we tend to use an operating microscope which makes everything brighter uh, and uh, bigger for you to see, so you can see what you're, you're doing much better. Halgert will be put asleep, uh, and then he's turned over his, his tummy. His head will be fixed in special pins, so he'll have a, a cut running from about there just to down there, so about that long, lengthways up and down the back of, back of the head, upper neck, I suppose. We cut through the, the skin on the surface and then underneath that you have very strong neck muscles and we go between them we tend not to try, we try, we try not to cut through them because you know it can be pretty sore for a start but obviously they, they they heal much better if you go between the muscles so go right down the midline onto the the back of the skull and the upper spine then once we've exposed the back of the skull and the upper spine we remove a small area of bone around that hole. So essentially we're making that hole wider. And also we're removing the back of the first cervical vertebra. You can't push that brain back into the skull, but you can give it more room. If it has more room, it doesn't press on the brain stem. And then that should alleviate the problems he's having at the moment. That cerebellum has plenty of room and there's no pressure then on the brain stem anymore. Downstairs, mum waits for news. Some parents actually go to the chapel that's here in the hospital and spend some time there, like um, Halgret's mum did. And she felt she got a lot of peace from that because her husband isn't here today to support her because they have two other kids at home. So we're her support. Well, there's obviously a danger of injury to the brain. Uh, in particular, the cerebellum, which will cause problems with your balance or your coordination. Uh, injury to the spinal cord, which would paralyze you, so put you in a, a wheelchair. Uh, and that would be a high injury, so you would have no use of your arms or your legs. There is a risk of injury to the two major arteries running nearby into, in, into that back of the brain, and they, that supplies the, the brain stem. So an injury to one or other of those arteries could cause very severe stroke and, and, and leave Halligar very disabled. And these Things like this happening are extremely rare, thank God. And touch wood, I've never had, you know, a problem like that, you know, after doing dozens of these. Having said that, it's always at the back of your mind that no one's arrogant enough to say that these things couldn't happen. But he'll be back, hopefully very soon. Because I was thinking the worst one, you know what I mean? That he can paralyze, you know, or some brain damage or something like that. So we want to see how he is. Meanwhile, in the day ward, Courtney is also on the way to theatre. The tickles. The tickles. It's tickling your belly. Courtney has a, a divergent squint, which is actually relatively unusual. Most squints here would be would be actually convergent. The eyes are in. Mm -hmm. Yours is nicer. Courtney had one eye which was wandering off and uh, the difficulty is the eye goes lazy. Courtney has done very well with her treatment up till now. She's worn her glasses and that has helped her vision. She's worn her patch and that has helped her vision as well. And now is the time to straighten her eye. Now, Courtney, can I look at your bracelet again Hi, Courtney. for Emer? How are you? What age are you, Courtney? Okay, so we have Courtney O'Connell Kavanagh. Courtney O'Connell Kavanagh. Yeah. I moved the muscles of her eyes in order to straighten her eyes. It, it's all quite intricate, really, and certainly in, in a, a small child like Courtney, she's very small as well. Her eyes are small, everything's small. So um, the anaesthetic, particularly, is, is you know has to be managed very carefully. Children are much less robust than adults in this way, particularly small ones. We had planned what to do beforehand. I checked her and checked all her measurements beforehand, so we knew exactly what we were going to do. I know she'd be all right. Get a phone call to come back up and me out there.
In accident and emergency, the results of Jason's x-ray have been processed. As we suspected, he's quite tender and swollen over his knuckle there, his um, fifth right metacarpal. Um, and on the x-ray, it confirms that he does have a fracture there of his fifth um, metacarpal, which is just at his, his baby finger there. This is the bone here. This is where we're suspicious. He was quite swollen here over his fifth metacarpal. And as you can see here, this is the, the fracture here. Um, and this is what we call it slightly displaced. So part of the bone has moved over here. And this is where, where it's fractured. Jason is brought in for a cast which will help support the injury. It will hurt a tiny, tiny, tiny bit at first. And the only Normally what we do because it's evening time now and it's after hours for comfort measures we put them in a back slab which is, is, is like a plaster, a below elbow which goes from the elbow down to the hand. His knuckle has kind of moved down a little bit because of the injury we call it. Um, a boxer's fracture it may not be in his history today but um, that's kind of I suppose where they actually get it from. All we did was um, strap these two little fingers together, okay, and we're literally just pushing back with our finger here to pop it back into place. Can I be knocked out? Can I? Yeah. No, can they put me to sleep? No. <laughs> that. That's it. That's very bad. That's, 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 that's a killer. Oh. Oh. That's all. You okay? You would see a lot of injuries there. Sometimes we see them um, if different figures, boxers' injuries, particularly if children are fighting or teenagers. Um, and he is quite swollen and, and tender, and it would be quite sore. Um, it would be a painful injury. So football is off the cards. Um, I think I'm out for five or six weeks now. It bothers me. I want to play. I have a tournament coming up in a couple of weeks. He will have to support his team from the sideline. Assistant manager. The surgery went very well indeed. Courtney is fast asleep still. She woke up, but then she, she as her mum said, gulped a glass of uh, a drink and went straight back to sleep again. She's a bit sleepy just from fasting all day and from the anaesthetic. We've put anaesthetic drops around the eyes, so she won't be sore at all. She'll be a bit cross and tired, but that's all. And she should sleep well tonight and wake up really, and, and children recover very quickly, so she should wake up. Uh, bouncing around tomorrow morning. Good girl. What's that? Yeah. Hey, touristy. Her vision won't be affected by this at all. We term it the cosmetic part of the whole treatment. This is to make her eyes look look right, but this doesn't affect her vision in any way. You okay. Did you go to sleep? It's hard. She'll be back with me in a week, and Mum is to get some ointment into the eye twice a day if she can. Some children just won't let you, but mostly they do. Well, it comes out a very little, a narrow little nozzle here. And, uh, really, she doesn't have to watch out for too much. It's very unlikely. She's very unlikely to have any problems now, but if the eye became very swollen, it might have an infection, and she'd have to, and we've told her to, any problems at all, just to come to ring and come straight away. Do you like some clothes? Yeah. Her eye will be quite red, but it'll go back to white very quickly. I think she'll be running around tomorrow morning. I think she'll be bouncing up looking for her breakfast. Oh, gorgeous. Now. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's lovely. Thanks. It's over now. It's just getting the last... A few stitches in his skin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but all the all the the big part is all over. Yeah, all right, absolutely fine. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Okay. See you later. It was a very severe compression. Uh, so I think it was well worth doing. Probably more dramatic at the time of surgery than it was even at the scan. Everything went as planned. We opened the skin, the muscle, removed the bone. Then we brought in the, 
operating microscope. We were able to see exactly what we were doing. We managed to decompress the cerebellum very nicely. He goes back to recovery to make sure that there's been no unforeseen complications that we didn't see at surgery. So, for example, somebody could bleed into the wound, wound uh, at the end of an operation, and that might happen after you're closed. Obviously, a blood clot there would cause the compression that you've just relieved, sometimes worse. So, he's going to recovery where they're going to monitor him over the next hour or so, uh, just to make sure that he's awake and he's moving everything and doing everything he should do. They say that everything went very good. And he was asking for me, he's moving, so he's very good. He will be very headachy. He'll feel nauseous. He'll probably vomit a few times on the ward. Now, obviously, we, we'll give him tablets and medicines to treat that. Uh, but he will. He's, he's going to be a grumpy little fella for the next 24, 48 hours. And he's asking for water already, so what is a very good sign as well. So very happy. Not really going to place any restrictions on his life. You might think that oh, having a bit of bone missing from the back here means he can't play football or or or, or, or uh, any of that. But in fact, the muscle there is so strong, uh, the amount of bone I've removed is so little that it, it really doesn't place any restriction. I think you know the out outlook is generally very very good for these children. on Temple Street Children's Hospital. They're, they're like poisons in the blood. They make you quite sick. Here's just your magic straw. He's had a few challenges since he's been born. The windpipe and the, and the esophagus are connected. Nobody can say what's going to happen in the future. I mean, Mark ultimately is deciding a lot of these things.